Hi everyone, I decided today that I would show you how I make my lemon meringue pie. I begin with uh, taking a packet of uh, tennis biscuits, putting them into a bag that I actually keep using. I use it until it can't be used anymore. Uh, I drop it in here. Some people uh, prefer to use um, a food processor or something that they like to be able to uh, break down the biscuits. But I find that at the end of the day, um, I'm struggling to seal this bag at the moment, important part of the process. Um, I think that at the end of the day for me, I find that there are fewer dishes if I do it this way. And I quite enjoy, I quite enjoy the process of just uh, breaking down these biscuits. So I'll just do a bit with my hand at first, just to get the process going. And then, uh, then I lean into the old, the old rolling pin. Got some of my other stuff in the way here. I'm going to get into the rolling pin and just start breaking it down. And when I'm not uh, trying to do a video, then I often have loud music playing in the background. And it's fantastic as you sing along there. But whilst, uh, so I don't keep you bored watching me break biscuits, to say once I've finished this, I'm going to then take some butter and put it into a bowl. I'll put it into this mixing bowl. Um, uh, some of the recipes suggest that when you make a biscuit base like this, that you just add about 60 grams of butter. But I've discovered over the time that I prefer something a little more battery. Uh, so I add 100 to 120 grams. Today I'm going to add 120 grams of butter, uh, put it into the bowl, add the biscuits, mix it up. And uh, from then we will put it into the freezer. But we'll be back with you in a second. So we've, uh, we've done the, bis the biscuits. We've uh, made them nice and fine. Put them into this bowl and then I've melted the butter. I don't think I said that in the first part when I mentioned the butter. So we've melted the butter and um, and I'll just add that into, I've created a little bit of a well in the middle just to help the process. And I slowly add the melted butter and, uh, and try to make sure that we eventually get all the dry spots um, nicely moist. And you'll see that, as I said, like 60 grams has felt far too dry for me. And so I prefer that, uh, making it a little moist. So now we've put our buttered biscuit mixture into a pie plate. Uh, it's important to remember to butter the pie plate, or I've used spray and cook today to, uh, to prepare the, the, the pie. And then I'm going to take this once I'm finished. Uh, just making it nice and pressed down. I'm going to uh, put this into the freezer for about 15 minutes and I prepare the rest of the pie. I get the filling all done while it's sitting in the freezer and we've turned our oven on to um, 170 degrees Celsius. So the oven has started warming up um, so that we can be ready for the next stage. So, so let's say again, you put your biscuit base into here, put it into the freezer for at least 15 minutes Prepare the rest of your pie filling while you do that. Turn your oven on to 170 and we'll be in the next phase. See you then. So now we, um, we grate uh, some lemons uh, to get, we're looking for two tablespoons of lemon rind. And, um, and once we've, we've done that, I then put the, the lemons in the microwave just for about 10 seconds or 15 seconds just to kind of warm it up to get the juice. And once we've got the juice out of them, we then uh, are looking for 125 milliliters of lemon juice to add to our mixture. So now I have uh, freshly squeezed um, these two large lemons and I'm going to, with my trusty scale, uh, which has just gone to sleep while I was uh, waiting to do this, with my trusty scale, because I like to be precise about things, is I'm going to measure out 125 milliliters of freshly squeezed lemon juice. And one of the reasons I do this first now, rather than waiting for later, which I did a little bit in the beginning, is because there is a chance of me forgetting to add the lemon juice, which I did once. So I'm going to just enter the bowl into which I'm going to make the filling. I'm going to add my 125 milliliters of, um, of lemon juice and uh, and then I'm going to add my two tablespoons. So I do see a little bit of a lemon pip come out there. So I'm just going to take that out of the bowl. Um, and then I'm going to just 
take the two tablespoons of lemon rind and add them uh, into the bowl as well. And then when we come back to you, we'll be sorting out our eggs, which I'll explain to you then. So what I do, because I still feel so much of a novice, is I first break my egg into a little bowl and then I, with my hand, extract uh, the yolk from the bowl and uh, put that into the mixing bowl and then I pour the white of the egg into this bowl so that I can keep that for my meringue. So we have uh, broken four eggs, put four yolks in here, set aside the whites of those eggs to make the meringue a little earlier and now I'm going to turn on uh, my digital scale once more and we are going to measure out 125 milliliters of boiling hot water, which we are going to use in a way that I'll show you in a moment. Um, but there we go, 125 milliliters. And now we're going to add a pinch of salt, and I'm doing that now because I just don't want to forget. And it's the one part of the recipe that isn't particularly measured, so I find it a bit freaky because I like things when they are exact. But I just, uh, oh, that's a little too much, that's a little more than a pinch. So I'll put a pinch of salt in. And then I'm going to add two tins of condensed milk, um, which you can sometimes find on special in places. And then what we're going to do, um, I forgot to get my teaspoon out, but I'll do that in a moment. So try and get the tins as empty as you can, as best as you're able. And then the wonderful thing is the hot water is a part of the recipe, but then you use the hot water uh, to help you empty the tins or to clean up the tins as it were. So I'm just going to get my hot water and put a little bit in here um, and then I'm going to put a little bit in here and I always leave a little bit over to try and do another rinse as we're at the end so just mix those up and pour that in there and just put that on the side for the moment to mix that up I'll get that out and pour that in there and just because I forgot to get my spoon ready just going to do this quickly trusty towel. I'll just grab a little teaspoon um, from somewhere. If I could find a teaspoon, I have a teaspoon. I'll just get a teaspoon and then before I do my final rinse, I'll just kind of scrape out the tin because there's actually still quite, there's still a, a good deal of, um, of condensed milk in there. So you don't, want to, you don't want to miss that opportunity or you don't want to miss all that lovely sweetness and it also makes your pie fuller obviously. You can see quite a lot of stuff coming out. Put my salt out of the way. See still quite a lot coming out. And then I just use my my last little bit of of hot water uh, to rinse off that tin. A little bit in there. And we do the hokey pokey and we turn about and kind of pull that in there and maybe do that. I know it's a bit of a overkill but I like doing that. And that's it for now. So now I've got all the ingredients in here for my filling. Uh, some people I think would feel free to just use a low speed on a hand beater but I found that rather than kind of mixing this too furiously it's just better to to do a light hand mix um, and so I just use this uh, this lovely little mixing thing and uh, and I, I take my time a bit in getting this in here just to gently make sure all the eggs are there and all the rind is nicely mixed and, and I just keep stirring it and then in a moment um, we'll pour it into the biscuit base and uh, and my camera person has dozed off for a while you'll be glad to know that I've awoken my camera person from her slumber and uh, so she's with us I have high standards for employees but she doesn't get uh, paid so it's um, I've got to kind of live with what I can get, you know. Anyway, be grateful. Oh, and I put my little, little beater. So I'm just pouring the, the filling into there. And then I just want to get my, my whisk from, from the bowl and just make sure again that you don't really want to, well, I don't want to leave too much behind. So this, I, I sometimes use a bigger Pyrex uh, plate for, for making this, which, have, which creates some room. This particular bowl is quite a tight fit, 
but we saw the end of the meringue with it, but it's quite a nice, it really makes it look nice because the thing's like a jam packed in a meringue. So the, the next step off this, I'll explain in a moment. So our pie has been in the oven. Um, I put it in for 20 minutes. 20 minutes at 170, just as it is, obviously without the meringue. This is how much time is left, and I've ended up, we've been getting other stuff ready. And so I watched my digital time. It means I've only got seven minutes left to make the meringue. I think we can do it. I've put the, um, the egg whites in here, and I'm just gonna beat them a little bit. It'll be a bit noisy for you, I think. And after beating them just for a couple of seconds like that, I then am going to add two teaspoons of this lemon juice. Um, and I'm not too precise, but it just gives the, the meringue a nice little flavor to it. Um, so just two teaspoons of some of the lemon, nice and freshly squeezed lemon juice that we had earlier. And then um, I'm going to beat that. And now we're going for the famous the peeps or whatever they call it. We just want to beat it until it's nice and sharp. Okay, as, as the starts to slip and nice and nice, you add half the sugar just progressively. Add, uh, this is a quarter of a cup, 60 mils. I might say it when it's not so noisy again. We're not checking the sound. So keep adding the half the sugar. Again, 60 mils of icing sugar. This is going to be a little more careful with because it can spray all over the kitchen. There's a person who has done that once or twice. been in there for 20 minutes and now this is the part that is uh, important to remember I find quite hard to remember sometimes but you add just two teaspoons of corn flour just to help the meringue stick on top and I've learned over the while just the best way I get it to spread evenly is just to put it in one of these uh, old tea strainers as it were and just kind of get a nice even balance across and that kind of does it and then uh, it's time to start adding the meringue, which came out nicely, and uh, I just use a spoon and I dollop it on, and then we start fighting with the biscuits a little later on the edges, but we, uh, we just get it on and then we try and shape it and, and give it a little bit of peaks and stuff again, and uh, we'll show you when we put it back in the oven in a moment. So now we've done the meringue. And I don't know if you'll see me when I do this, but I'm now going to take it back across to the to the oven and we put it back in the oven. Oops, <laughs> the gloves get dirty. We put it back in the oven for uh, about 13 minutes. So I'll be off camera, but I'll keep speaking to you. So we're gonna pop it back in the oven, same temperature, 170 degrees. And uh, and I've experimented over the time with what length I like, what length of time I like. And uh, some do it up to 20 minutes, but I find then it's overly brown and I think it's even burnt. And so I'm just going to, so I found, and then 13 gives me a light brown uh, meringue. Um, so we just set our timer and then we will take it out of the oven and we will rest it um, with the oven door open for at least an hour to cool down, a minimum of an hour, I often leave it for up to two hours. And after having done that, we'll put it in the fridge. But we'll have one more demonstration of what it looks like in a moment once we go to break. So 
our 13 minutes is up and this is what it's looking like for now and that's great and I'm going to not leave it out for too long I'm just going to nudge it back in again and close the oven and now I'm going to put one of our biggest uh, wooden spoons there just to leave it like that and we leave it for the hour and when it's done we'll say one final greeting to you